If you want to see very cool pictures, stick around until the end of this video. Hi, today I come to a place, this lake that called Fjallnora. And uh, this place is full of people during summer, but right now it's cold and no one is here. Uh, so I have the whole place to myself. That's great. The good thing about today is there's no wind. So the water is cold and the reflections are perfect. I like this tree as my first subject uh, of the day. I was uh, looking for the good composition here and I come up with this composition where I put the tree coming from the left corner and there is a finger that goes under these grasses and the main bark goes over the lake and there are some branches that they are all going from left to right upwards and I place uh, my camera carefully to, to separate this branch here from the grass and I put on the polarizer filter because that gives me first a little bit of darkness on the water and breaking the, but by removing the reflection so the white bark of the tree stand more out of the background uh, and these grasses are getting more vibrant color with the polarizer which is great How do I uh, get my exposure nailed in, uh, in photos? I'm not saying that I'm nailing it every time, of course, sometimes I miss uh, or do some mistakes and I, uh, I will regret it later. But those mistakes teach me some, some good lessons. For the scenes that they are flat like this, there is not direct light, it's ambient light and uh, or some reflected light. There is not much into it, so it's easy to nail uh, exposure. But I usually shoot in manual, so everything is in manual. I rarely shoot in aperture priority or shutter speed priority. So in this scene, what I'm shooting now, this tree, uh, first of all, I'm using about 20 millimeter on the lens and uh, it's f11. Why do I choose F11? Because I want to have the whole tree in focus and I focus somewhere in the middle of the scene. Uh, by F11, I could get the, the whole branches of this, the scene, the foreground in focus. For now, I'm at ISO 160, which is the lowest ISO on this camera natively. And uh, the, then it comes to, all comes to the shutter speed to, to nail the exposure, right? Because this scene is flat, I look at the histogram. Judging based on the back of the camera is usually is wrong because the, the screen of the camera, digital cameras are usually bright and they are not accurate. Um, so it's better to, to judge the exposure based on the histogram. So it's always good to, to have the histogram on on the back of the camera. And it's easy with the Fuji films. Uh, so this blue line here on this scale shows me how much of the scene is in focus from one meter to three meter. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a good, um, mm, good depth of field for this, this scene. Uh, that's all I need. Or I can push it a little bit further. So that comes with the F11 and uh, because I focused on somewhere in the middle of the scene. So if I change the focus, as you can see, it moves the, the scale. So if I focus on something two meter away from the camera, from one and a half meter to uh, almost one meter to, to infinity, to, to 10 meter or infinity is in focus now. And uh, with the histogram, 
which is always on on my camera I can judge the exposure <laughs> I have to change battery I have low batteries okay so the the, uh, the histogram should be shouldn't be looked like that so one side is actually which is the highlight is now is clipping and is way to the to the right or it shouldn't be like this which is all the data comes in the one third of the, the histogram so it's the image appears to, to be too dark so I'm now clipping some some blacks I came across a very nice scene here I have this fallen tree in the background uh, and its reflection and also some rocks and grass that comes into the, the water uh, it's a very simple scene and I compose it like this I'm going to show you now so I like this this uh, t triangle that uh, this tree and the fallen tree and its reflection creates uh, also all of those trees that they are a little bit lean uh, towards the side and they create some diagonals here also I place this uh, this rocks and the grass on top of it in this corner because this is also creates some, some sort of rectangle which is mimicking this oops mimicking this this uh, tree and its reflections for the exposure on this uh, shot I'm still on ISO 160 and I'm using the polarizer as I said but I also uh, put my aperture to f8 because the scene I'm focusing on and I'm taking picture of is far away from me it's like 50 meter uh, away from me with the f8 I can get everything in focus I don't need f11 and f8 is safer for the for better the quality of the image and I focus on the the rocks so from there to background it's everything is in focus uh, for shutter speed right now I'm at uh, half a second if you don't like to use histogram or if you don't know how to use histogram of your camera or your camera doesn't uh, give you a good histogram or easy one that to work with <coughs> one way to to nail um, exposure is to rely on your cameras uh, metering set your aperture and your ISO to something that you want these ones to be set and put your uh, the third parameter which is in this case uh, the shutter speed to auto and you can meter the scene and uh, when you want to take a picture with this auto the, the camera will decide which uh, shutter speed is good based on the metering of the scene so in this case if I as I said set the ISO and the aperture and now I switch to auto shutter speed uh, so this means that it's uh, in a uh, aperture priority mode now the camera and when I half uh, press the, the shutter the shutter speed that camera is suggesting is 1.1 .1. and with 1.1 I have a little bit of the white spots on the, the rocks that they are blinking uh, so I think it's uh, safer if I go a little bit darker just to make sure that I don't blowing up any highlights on the rocks <laughs> so that's why then I go back to F2 set the, the uh, shutter speed to half a second not F2 sorry shutter speed to half a second then then I can take a picture and I'm uh, I'm sure that it's, it's a good uh, exposure for this this scene this is how I, I set my uh, metering and right now is in multi so in some brands it's called differently so like like average or whatever 
so it's a uh, it's basically divided the the scene in the center and the corners and it's average everything all this me uh, measured for the scene like that it's flat it's perfect you can use this one it's more reliable you can put it in the center weight if you have something in center that is more important to you or you can put it on a spot where they you want to if you have a very very bright spot that you want to make sure that this one or that hot spot doesn't blow up uh, so you can put the priority uh, the, the metering on the spot and focus on that as as you can see yes so if i put my uh the, the box where, where the the camera does the meter or focus on the rocks it gives me 1 over 1.9 which is like like a half a second that I, I choose for this shot so i was right about this so this is one way to to nail the exposure i thought why not taking one picture just of this tree and its reflection i came over this uh, jetty and uh, it's perfect because i can just get a little bit closer directly look at this, uh, this the tree and uh, take a picture of the scene so here we go i guess i, I disturbed the water a little bit so i wait just a few seconds to get it calm again and take a picture now i also interested in taking a picture of this scene with the sky now as i include the sky the scene immediately becomes more complicated and it's more it has more uh, contrast between the bright sky and a dark forest and its reflection so how we can expose for these type of scenes now uh, so if i do the same method that i just said if you use the metering of the camera then uh, it gives me roughly like one sixtieth of the second exposure for the scene but based on my judgment it was a little bit under exposed um, so i i chose uh, to go with the fifteenth of the second for the scene one thing to remember is that um, with the sky and with the highlights uh, if you get overexposed um, it's harder to get uh, details back you have data there uh, still but uh, it's harder to to bring them back in post uh, rather than shadows that shadows are easier to work with so it's good to to think about it when you take a picture uh, so maybe go one third of the stop lower than what you you think uh, or your camera says that is uh, the best exposure then then you have more data in the highlights uh, but of course keep an eye on your shadows and dark areas if you are clipping the blacks if the, the scene is super contrasty then you have to to do the exposure blending then this is the only way uh, i know of so you can uh, take a one picture for the expose for the for the shadows for the dark parts and one exposure or two or three for the mid-tones and highlights then you blend all of these together in uh, photoshop well that's extra step of working so if we can uh, nail this in uh, the field then we are we have less files to work with
there were some dust on my filter and my lens. Uh, one thing uh, in, is important to, to keep in mind when you, you when we are talking about the exposure and nailing the exposure in your camera is to, to know your camera, to know your the limits of your camera. Uh, by that I mean that uh, you should know that uh, how much of the shadows you can recover from the files that you get from your camera. If you expose uh, down and then you get uh, very dark shadows, how much you can recover and how much noise you get from the camera because each camera is different. Uh, each brand and each sensor is different. Also, the same uh, is true for, for highlights because some cameras can recover highlights very well, some they don't do well in highlights uh, recovery. Uh, so when, uh, sorry, I don't mean the camera they can do uh, recover the highlights, I mean you can recover the highlights from the files you get from the camera. So know your camera limitations. Uh, and the only way to do that is just, just to experiment with it and take some different exposures uh, when you are in the field and taking pictures. So it's good to, to practice stuff uh, and uh, just take some test shots and then you will have the, uh, some data to work with. There is something on, on cameras when you take picture in auto mode, <laughs> it's called exposure compensation. And that's to override or adjust the exposure when you set your uh, camera settings to auto. And this camera is this, this this dial here, so I can go one stop or two up to three stop lower or over the the suggested uh, settings from the camera. Next time I should bring a lighter and some fire equipment with me to make fire. It's very cold. Oh, it would be nice if I had a fire right now. Oh. <laughs> I have found the best composition of the day. Uh, I was looking at the ice uh, surface with this nice pattern that we have on the on the water, the, the ice, and I uh, found the, this branch here beneath the ice. I really like the ice pattern, but I noticed this uh, this branch underneath, and it uh, looks a, a very surreal image. I included this this rock, a little bit of rock, to get uh, to give this image a bit of depth and also more content of the, what it is. I really like this this scene. I think it's it's fantastic for the settings to make the exposure on this one. I, uh, first I tried with f8 uh, because the height of the, the rock and that uh, branch is beneath the ice so and I'm zooming in quite a bit I guess it's um, around 40 millimeter or something 50 and I'm close to the subject one meter so I don't have much of depth of field and I tried with, to do with the focus stacking on this one so I took some pictures of the rock uh, the closest uh, part of the rock and then the middle of the rock and then the edge of the rock and then the the branch underneath and I mean the, the ice surface that might work but I also try with f16 which I think f16 will give me more depth of field and uh, with that I have to do less, um, take take less pictures to do this uh, focus stacking. Maybe one only for the the front of the rock, and one for the the branch would be enough. So with f16, uh, I saw 250. I just look at the histogram, and adjust the histogram uh, accordingly with my my shutter speed. So the histogram is mostly in the middle and uh, I don't have any dark shadows. I'm using polarizer by the way and what polarizer does is that remove some of the sky reflection so I can see through the, the eyes. 
without the polarizer I have too much uh, reflection of the sky covering this, this branch and uh, with the polarizer I'm removing that and make the image darker more contrasty more punchy and more surreal so with f16 i saw 250 and my shutter speed is one second while i really enjoy taking this image i also decided to exclude the stone and i came up with this I also took some pictures of the eyes pattern itself, which I found very fascinating. But my favorite of those eyes pattern pictures is this one. Let me know which of these images I took today you like the most. Uh, I really think uh, like the last one with the with this, uh, the eyes and the branch underneath of it. It's different. I hope you liked the video and I enjoyed it and you enjoyed the images and tips I gave you about the exposure. And uh, let me know if you have any question or if I missed something that you think that I should mention in this video about the exposure that I missed. I'm sure I missed something. Uh, but then uh, again, thank you so much for joining me this video uh, in this week and watching this video. And hope to see you soon again. And until next time, take care. Bye. On the way back home, I found these scenes and these pictures became one of my favorites of the day. <laughs>